<laughs> I can't see anybody. This is great. Um, I understand there are some government employees here. Uh, you're not going to like what I'm going to say. Um, so either take a stiff drink or go play pool for a while if you don't want to be offended. The blockchain is the first world-changing technology in the past 100 years that did not come from the bowels of a secret government development, didn't come from the CIA, did not come from Samsung or Apple or IBM. It came from ordinary programmers, ordinary people. And it's been with us for almost 10 years. It has become part of the people. Governments are just now starting to see the blockchain and cryptocurrency as an opportunity or a threat uh, or something to fear, and it is all of those, all three. The opportunity is, like with Facebook's Libra, to say, we have created something that empowers the people. Well, that's bullshit. It doesn't empower anybody except Facebook. Because everything you do now will be monitored financially. Not just what you're buying, not just the people you're talking to, who your friends are that's already monitored. No. Everything that you do financially. Is this in the people's interest? You know the answer to this. We are rapidly a approaching an era where people versus government becomes a worldwide phenomenon. Now, why would governments fear the blockchain and cryptocurrency? It's because with the advent of privacy coins like Monero and dozens of others, and the advent of distributed exchanges, which are just now becoming real, then governments can neither monitor nor control what is happening in your financial life. If you're using a privacy coin like Monero and a distributed exchange like the McAfee Dex, which just came out two weeks ago, we're in beta, by the way, it's not real. I mean, it's real, but not functional. In six months, it will be the equivalent of Binance on a distributed and decentralized basis. Now, we built ours on the Ethereum blockchain, and we'll be doing it on other blockchains as well, so that you can't shut it down. It's there. What is the blockchain? An immutable record of what's happened. Now, what happened is we put a bunch of smart contracts on it, that will allow distributed exchanges to be real. So when the SEC or the IRS comes to me and says, what have you done? I'm going to go, oh, God, I'm sorry. I, I never thought that you might want to see what's happening. I made a mistake. But it can't be changed, can't be altered, can't be controlled, can never be shut down. So this scares governments. Why? If they do not know where your income is coming from and what you're spending, then they can't collect income taxes, which is the largest single revenue source for almost every government. Now, in my mind, income taxes, at least in America, are illegal. They're unconstitutional. And until 1913, we didn't have them. Nevertheless, today, income taxes is the majority of the United States revenue source. Now, if you believe that people are going to be honest. And if they earn $100,322, they're going to say so in their tax returns, knowing that the government doesn't know. There's no way for the government to find out. But yes, I'm going to be honest and tell you, you know that that's a lie. People are not 
this way. They don't act in this fashion. If they can get away with something and know they can't be caught, then, well, they're not going to pay taxes. This frightens governments. But unfortunately, it's like Pandora's box. The blockchain and cryptocurrency is out of that box, and it will never be put back in. So what are governments doing, or corporations, or regulatory agencies, contemplating or building their own cryptocurrency, like China, or corporations like Facebook? Why? Thinking that if they promote this properly, like Facebook's empowering the people, utter bullshit, controlling the people is what they're talking about. And as governments come out with their own cryptocurrencies, the crypto dollar, the crypto euro, the crypto pound, they will be saying the same thing. We are empowering you, making your life easier, when what are they really doing? Monitoring, controlling, and getting deeper access into the privacy of your own lives. So this is that reality. But the people, the people who are using Bitcoin, Monero, Ethereum, the people who are on exchanges, the people who are selling goods and services for cryptocurrency, well, they've been doing this for a while and they're not going to stop. And the technology developed by the people, privacy coins, distributed exchanges, this will win only if the people understand that this is where their power is. It's not going to be with Libra. It's not going to be with the crypto dollar. It's going to be with something that comes out of this morass of thousands of cryptocurrencies that currently exist, which we all latch on to. And it will be a privacy coin. And there may be many, hundreds, it doesn't matter how many. If they're usable, if they're functional, that's all that matters. When people understand that with Ethereum, Bitcoin, and many of the others, if I send you money, or you send me money, or you publish your wallet address on your Twitter page, well, I can go in and see how much is in there, what comes in, what goes out. If your bank did that, if a plumber came to your house, fixed your sink, you wrote them a check for $40, they went to the bank and said, hi, I'd like to see Mr. McAfee's balance in his account, please. And the bank goes, oh yeah, here, he's got this much. And would you please alert me every time money comes in and who it came from? And alert me when money goes out and who he's, who he's sending it to? Would you be happy? No. But that's the current state of much of cryptocurrency. Privacy coins solve that problem. Unless you don't really care. I mean, if you want your plumber to know how much money you have and how you're spending it or receiving it, that's cool with me. But if that does bother you, you will be with a privacy coin. And if you want to do transactions that are just between you and the person you are transacting with, you will use distributed exchanges, where in our exchange, we ask for no information, no name, no email address, no documentation, nothing. We hold no money. We are a portal onto the blockchain where we have established a bunch of smart contracts that operate this autonomously. We are not in control. You are in control. Now, it'll be another six months before it's complete. We already have our beta released, and it's going fine. But when it is released completely, and when it's functional with cross-chain transactions, it will be just like Binance, only we don't charge anything to list a coin. You don't have to give us a Lambo and $200,000, no. You press the button at the top, name the coin, and put in the technical specs, and you're now fucking listed. That's it. 
privacy coins, distributed exchanges, will be the end of government control. They cannot anymore stop it, control it, or monitor it. Now, what do you think is going to happen when that occurs? Our government's going to go, oh, fuck, we lost. They won. No. They're going to be angry. And they're going to pass laws. Or they're going to just crack down like in China two years ago. Every single exchange shut down with a snap of the fingers. How did they do that? The exchanges were all centralized. They had an office. They had servers. They had employees. They had an address. Simple. Shut off the electricity or arrest everybody or throw a bomb in the building, whatever. End of the story. With distributed exchanges, you can't shut them down. If you shut down McAfeeDex.com, I don't care. We already have 15 additional portals, and by the end of the year, we'll have 100. Can't be shut down. So governments will have only one recourse. It is now illegal to use decentralized exchanges and privacy coins, or all cryptocurrency, like in India. In India, they're almost passing laws to ban all cryptocurrency. You can't own it, you can't trade it. End of story. But also, for 75 years in America, smoking weed, smoking marijuana, is illegal. Has it stopped anyone? No. Why? Too many people smoking it. In America, in the 1920s, they made alcohol illegal. Did that stop alcohol? No, we drank more alcohol during Prohibition than at any other time. Why? Too many people drinking alcohol. There are already too many people using cryptocurrency. It can't be legislated away. If you're using privacy coins, if you're taking care, if you have a distributed exchange, no one can tell what you're doing unless they're in your living room with you watching you press the keys. So don't be afraid. When laws are passed, keep in mind the law is no more severe than smoking weed. I don't know if anybody here smokes weed. Probably not. You're business people. However, I bet you do, some of you. <laughs> And that's illegal. In, well, here in Europe, I guess it's not. In Spain, you can smoke, what, four pounds a day? What is it? Anyway. <laughs> There's a limit, I'm sure. Nevertheless, it's the same thing. You cannot legislate away something that the majority of the population, or even a small minority, 5% is all you need. If 5% of the population is doing something, you can't stop it. Let it go as long as it's not out murdering your neighbor or robbing banks. That's a different story, but no. In the privacy of your own home, conducting business can't be stopped. Now, if anybody's from a government listening to me, you need to take heed because the technology is already in place to bypass your attempts to collect income taxes. And it does not matter what you do. Make a law. Legislate this. Double your police force. Make it the death penalty. It's not going to fucking matter. People will do what they want to do in the privacy of their own homes. End of story. And I'm going to open it up to questions, because I'll just talk all day. Any questions? Everybody's asleep. Or is anybody? I can't even see. Is anybody here? Oh, there. Yes, sir. Well, why don't you come up here, because I'm half deaf. Okay, so the question, uh, I can come with you here. Yes. So, uh, we discussed, we had an interview, but I forgot to ask you one question. And yes. The question is about the quantum computers. You're a tech guy with tech experience. What do you think about this? Because it's like one of the things that is coming out recently, and uh, the press, they like, they tend, no, they like okay. to write yes. about this. So, what do you think? Thank you. Okay, quantum computers. And I assume the next question would be, how will that impact uh, cryptocurrency in the blockchain? Yes? Okay. Quantum computers, there's a lot of talk about it. 
especially Google, that has quantum computers that can do calculations in a fraction of a second that would take 10 trillion years using normal computing. Does this mean it is a general purpose computer? No. Quantum computers have tiny, specific applications. And it's going to be 50 years before a general purpose one comes out. And if it does, is that going to end cryptocurrency? No. No more than computing ended selling people gum at a store. It just changes the way that it's done. Because if you have a general purpose quantum computer capable of breaking a blockchain, well, then you have a quantum computer on the blockchain side capable of firming it up. And we'll be in the same position we are today. Hackers trying to get in, we trying to keep them out. Now, if only the hackers have quantum computers, or if only the government, that's perhaps a different story. I hope I answered your question. Thank you. Yes, sir. Come on up here. I'm, like I said, I can't hear. Take a, picture, take a picture for my mom. <laughs> you wished for that. I know, I did. All right, um, like I prefaced, geez, I don't need this. Like I prefaced, I'm not an advocate for Facebook, I mean for Libra, I just think it's interesting because of what it says oh, yeah. no, about no. other platforms. So, yes. I, I'm a Bitcoin maximalist. I am Obviously. disappointed by, like I mentioned, it has not become an actual real life use, at least in my point of view, like I, I'm not paying for things in Bitcoin now. Right. The, there is, for non-technical people, especially people without internet access that's easy, barriers to adopting Bitcoin. Yeah. It seems like almost higher barriers. Like I, I'm a big fan of decentralized exchanges right. and Monero, but I think we have that usability hump and the possible benefit of something like Libra, mm -hmm. like Libra, is that it may be easier adoption. Okay. So how do we bridge the gap between usability and security and getting enough people on there that there's critical mass that right. we finally cross the chasm? Okay, uh, good question. All right, um, Bitcoin maximalists. You know, I'm, I'm not going to put down any Bitcoin maximalists here, but you guys need to move out of your mother's basement. All right? <laughs> no. Okay. There's this this division in the crypto world between the Bitcoin maximalists thinking that's all we need and the rest of the world who are using privacy coins and smart contracts to do things like create distributed exchanges that you just can't do on Bitcoin. It's an old technology, it doesn't support privacy, it doesn't support smart contracts, on and on. Slow, and you'll fix that I'm sure. Um, but there is another world. And that world is growing. I don't know if you've noticed what's happening with Bitcoin and what's happening with alt currencies. Alt currencies are now taking their stage. Um, and I firmly believe that the main problem with Bitcoin is privacy, just like it is with Ethereum. That if I see your wallet address, you're done, dude. I'm going to watch every penny that comes in and every penny that goes out forever just because I'm bored, if nothing else. Or you're, a, you're a, uh, a competitor of mine, and I happen to get your wallet address. Now we're in business, we're gonna see who is sending him money and who he's buying his goods from. If I can cross-reference wallet addresses to people, which is trivial. That's a flaw to me. I, I want something where my competitors, if they have my bank uh, um, number, can't go into that and see what I've got and what's happening. Privacy coins solve that. We also need a world where cryptocurrencies, blockchain applications, can be used for things outside the crypto world. Things, the, the, the concept of distributed exchanges, where the smart contracts do all of the work. And there are no smart contracts with Bitcoin. Um, on and on and on. All of the applications that we can do on other coin blockchains cannot be done on the Bitcoin blockchain. So I'm not saying Bitcoin's good or bad, I just think there have to be other coins. Um, and how do we then make that palatable to other people? Now, I disagree that Bitcoin is easier to use than Monero. I mean, I think they're exactly the same, other than Monero is a lot faster. 
Um, I don't see a barrier to entry to altcoins where some of them are designed to make your life trivial, that you know, need to know nothing whatsoever about altcoins of the blockchain in order to use them. So this has to do with user interface design and design of blockchains to make it easy for people to enter the cryptocurrency fray. So I hope that answers. Just my question. And we don't disagree, by the way. Go ahead. But it was, I'm I, I'm with, I, I was kind of distinguishing between something legal. Look, I'm not a fan of BSF either. I'm distinguishing not between the usability of Bitcoin and what you're talking about, but between unfortunately. Okay, okay. use the mic. Or come back up. That's okay. <laughs> Again, not a Libra advocate, but I'm not saying Bitcoin's easier to use than Monero. I take your points as given. I agree. I have this problem myself with Bitcoin and the rest of these. What I'm talking about is, you know, for people who have like the Facebook app on their mobile device, yes. it's a very on easy onboarding process where they have WhatsApp. It's a very easy Absolutely. onboarding process. Absolutely. And then they say, hey, do you want to send some Libra? Yes. And I don't want some Libra or something like Libra to win at the expense of what you're talking about. Yes. But I don't think you quite address the corporate crypto in WhatsApp or in Facebook usability versus well, yeah, you're proposing. They, right. No, the, uh, the envelope for Facebook is going to be trivial and massive, all right? But is it not our responsibility as, as people who are leaders of the crypto world to point out, okay, that's fine. You want to use it? But keep in mind that by doing so, this is what you're giving up. You're giving up your privacy. You're allowing them to ooze into every aspect of your financial life, and they can monitor it and control it. It's just like a bank, only worse. So uh, that's our job, to explain that. And then if you want to use it, use it. Or I might use it myself for convenience for things that I just don't give a shit that the government knows what I'm doing. But at the same time, to say, by the way, if in fact you care about privacy, if you care about government keeping out of your stuff, then you don't want to use this or that because, and then tell what the reasons are. I mean, you're absolutely correct. And Facebook has, you know, a terrific advantage. The U.S. government's going to have even greater advantage, but it's our job to raise the alarm. People, you don't have to use this. Even if they make it, you must use this, that's fine. Ignore it and get back to business. Any other questions? Uh, so I got the mic. Ah. Yeah. Hi, John. How are you doing? I can't help yeah. but notice you have two mics. Yes, uh, uh, this is louder. So I'm <laughs> Williamson Prabratensky from Latokian. So Bitcoin is a great digital gold, but it's a bit volatile for daily transactions from people from India. Stable coins, they are backed by dollars, so it still depends on the system. Facebook Libra uh, is from Facebook, which is already too big. It's already kind of have a big influence and can influence elections potential and so on. So it's not likely that it's a good idea to give them this uh, new uh, kind of currency, transactional currency. So why not um, crypto community co comes together and um, create the board to manage supply of the currency, of the new currency, which will be less volatile and uh, will be managed uh, a bit closer to existing fiat currency. So with the monetary policy, with inflation targeting, what do you think of that? Is this kind of uh, monetary board possible within the crypto community? Okay. Um, the key word is for the crypto community to come together. What are the chances of that? I'm, I mean, I'm being very serious here. We've got thousands of coins. We have Bitcoin maximalists and minimalists. We have privacy coin advocates. We have stable coin advocates. And by the way, I don't think it's, it's a bad thing to have a stable coin based on the US dollar, like DAI. Never varies more than 1% up or down from the dollar. Because right now, what is everybody doing? Uh-oh, the market's volatile. I'm going to cash in and get my dollars, all right? Well, why bother? If you're going to get back in at some point, then cashing in is merely converting your Bitcoin or Ethereum or Monero to DAI, 
trivial concept. Nothing gets cashed out. There's no fiat going one way or the other. And then later on, convert part of that back into whatever you want to invest in or use. That's the value of stable coins now. Because we all know the crypto market is, well, it's beyond volatile. <laughs> it's like Bitcoin jumped, what, $1,500 yesterday? Uh, God knows what it'll be. To, well, it may be down 2000 today. I don't know. Uh, it's up, it's down. Um, but a stable coin, something that you can put your assets into and know that three years from now, it's still on a par with the dollar. Is that not better than having to exit and take the dollars? This is how I see stable coins. And I, only, I, I think there's only one, only one really stable coin, and that is the DAI. And, and by the way, here's another thing you can do with smart contracts. Create a stable currency that does not go up or down in the story. So that's another thing Bitcoin can't do. So, um, and DAI is based on the Ethereum blockchain that, the, the, and the Ethereum smart contracts, as our DEX is as well. So, you know, I, I, I don't think the crypto community will come together and all agree on what should be done because we all have our biases. You know, the, the Ethereum people, it's, well, it's going to be Ethereum. The Bitcoin maximalists, it's got to be Bitcoin. Uh, the privacy coins has got to be Monero or Apollo. Um, we're not going to come together on this. But we can come together on an understanding of what we have to do. Not with an individual coin, not with, not with uh, this position or that position, not with let's create a brand new currency we all agree on because that won't happen. But to understand that whatever comes from the people well, let's give it a look. If it comes from the people, it's probably not going to pass all your information to the government. And if it does, put a red, a red X mark by that one and move on to the next. So our responsibility, I don't think, is, is to build the ultimate currency, but to understand the power that cryptocurrency, not developed by governments and institutions, but by people, offers us for the first time in human history, a chance for absolute financial freedom where your wallet is your bank. Have you noticed that? That if you want to wire money to somebody overseas, I've got to get up, got to go to the bank, got to fill out forms, I've got to get permission, I've got to get a stamp, and then this time tomorrow, maybe the money will get there. If I have a cryptocurrency wallet, I don't even get out of bed. I watch your, watch your wallet address. I put it in. How much? $200. Thank you. Done. Your wallet is your bank. It has all the functionality of your bank. It's yours. And if that wallet can't be looked into by anyone, meaning you're in a privacy coin now, and if all of your activity is on a distributed exchange, you are free, people. No one will know what you do with your money. Neither should they. It's your fucking money. You worked for it. Were we born to work four months every year for our government? I don't think so. No. That's theft. You're in slavery for those four months where you're working and every penny goes to the government. Now, they spread it out so you don't notice that they're taking four months of your work, but they are. So our job is to understand that mechanism and to ensure that everyone in the world understands that mechanism and let them choose. You want to still use fiat? Go ahead. You want to use uh, Facebook's Libra? Go ahead. You want to use whatever? You want to build your own cryptocurrency? Please, go ahead. Don't, people, lose this opportunity, please God, to free yourselves financially. Because using fiat currency, those who control the currency, how much of it there is, monitoring where it goes, are your masters. Because you cannot buy a house, pay the rent, send your kids to school, get insurance, get medical care without that fiat currency currently. But what if you didn't have to use that currency? 
What if when they doubled the number of bills in, in use and devalued your hard work by 50% that you didn't care because you're not using it? This is where we have to be because this is where we will be eventually, I promise you. This is not a war that the people can lose. This is merely a war which will go on for a short period of time and governments will adapt, or it is a war that will go on for centuries, but it will continue until the people win. See this. So let's get it over with and do it now. Thank you very much.